There's a Lewis script out there for OBS Studio that's been giving a lot of people trouble. It allows you to put an analog clock on your live stream. I'm going to show you how to do this, but guess what? It's much easier and much more dependable than the Lewis script. This is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It uses your system time, and there is no green screen. There is no need for a filter. This is a transparent background that is set in the CSS, and it is dependable, and it is easy, and it is very powerful because there are many parameters that you can modify to make it look exactly like what you want. Let's get some. Electrify your online presence with live, live streaming. streaming. A huge shout out to Maximum Yarnage, Joe Dark, and Brian Page Model Trains. They signed up for access to the three dimensional subscribe and bell buttons, and they are actually applying these graphics to their channel. Thank you guys. That's awesome. If you got on the mailing list, congratulations. I just sent you 30 clock faces that you can use with this tutorial. If you didn't sign up, you're not out of luck. I have two that you can download in the description. I'm sorry if you didn't sign up in time to get access to these. If, if you, you want, want access to more more graphics for these tutorials so that you get a look and feel that matches your channel. You've got to sign up to the mailing list, get access to it. If anything new happens with the channel in regards to offers or free stuff or what's happening down the road, sign up, get access so that I can communicate with you on a more personal level. Okay, here we are in codepen.io. I will put a link to this page so that you can see what I'm seeing here. And I just want to give you a quick breakdown on how this works. And the best way to really think about this is like a car. Each column represents parts of the car. For example, on the left, the HTML, that represents the car's frame, okay? The column in the middle represents the code that controls the car's look and feel, what kind of interior it has, what kind of dashboard lights it has, sort of just sort of like the cosmetic control of the car. And then on the right hand is the JavaScript, and that represents the car's engine. It powers the car. So we don't want to modify the car's framework, and we don't want to modify the car's engine because that already is successfully powering the clock. It's using the system time, and that works beautifully. We don't want to need to modify that stuff. We are going to put 100% of our focus into the CSS because we want to modify the clock to make it look like what you want it to look like for your channel. Now you could potentially run this as a browser source, this actual page, and bring it into OBS from this actual page. But you can also save this page as a zip file, and I'm gonna show you how to do that so that you can run this entire thing from your computer and maybe get a little boost in performance because it's running from your machine versus running off the internet. So at the end of the video, I will show you how to do it. It is not hard, it's actually very fun. Okay, let's dig into the CSS. And let me just drag this down a little bit so we see more of the code here. There's a lot of code in here and a lot of parameters that change look and feel. I just want to let you know that I've put comments in here. See these greater than and less than sign things? I try to make them a little bit more visible for you so you can find them easily. I try to explain the parameter directly below it. So, for example, to change the background color in the, in the full document here, currently it's white. I made a notation that says background color. So if you make a change to this thing, it'll change it to any color you want. So for example, if I type in green, CodePen will automatically re refresh. The thing is designed to be tinkered with and it changed this background to green, okay? So that I did that and then I also moved all the parameters that we're gonna change towards the top of the CSS column here so that we can easily access the stuff. Now you could bring this into to OBS as a browser source and designate green as transparent and remove it and you're good. But why bother with that when you don't even have to use a filter? Go into the background parameter here, highlight the word green and type in the word transparent. Let CodePen update the page for you. It goes white, but let me tell you, this is actually transparent. So when you bring this in as a browser source, the only thing you'll see is the clock, which is super cool. Okay, let me show you how easy it is to change the graphic that is the clock face itself. So if we scroll down just a little bit here, you'll see a class called clock. See it right there? And right down towards the bottom of this class, you'll see background dash image and then this URL call. And it goes to a call that's over at IMGR. So if I go to my IMGR account here, uh, let's see, I'll go back and I'll click the other clock that I have here and click the direct link right here. It copies it automatically for me. I'll go back in, highlight what was there and paste the new one. It's just that easy. See, look how easy that is. Now, if you downloaded the 30 clocks, what I'm going to show you what you can do is download the entire file and run it off your computer. And when you make a reference to one of the clock files, all you do is remove all the HTML call stuff and then you're left with something like that. 
and boom, it works. So I'll, I'll explain how to do that in just a few seconds. Okay, let's change the color of the hands. If we keep on scrolling down, I've separated the classes for the color, and dot hand will control the color for both the hour and the minute hand. Currently, it's set to black. If you highlight this funky code right here, it's called a hex color. You can type anything you want in here. I'll type in the word blue just to show you. Bang. The seconds hand is usually defaulted as red, but uh, that's what that means. F00, that means red. You can do the same thing. Uh, highlight it and type in, I don't know, yellow. Let's we'll see what happens. Bang. So that's how you control color. If you want to get a little bit more granular control over color, I made a link to this page right here. So you can highlight it in the comments, open up another tab in your browser, paste that sucker in there, and you have full access to all kinds of cool colors that you can choose, variants of different colors that you select here. Okay, let's scroll down just a little bit more, and we are going to control the dimensions of the clock hands. Now, this is important if you change the, the graphic of the clock face, because sometimes the numbers may be closer to the center, sometimes they may be wider out. So this is a great parameter to modify to make it look like it's fitting the actual new clock face that you upload. So we have have something called height and width. The width is actually the length of the clock hands and the height is actually the width of the clock hands. I know it's confusing, but just understand that I have documented each parameter here to represent what it actually is. So for example, if I go into the hour hand and I change the height to let's say 11 pixels, watch what happens. It gets fatter. So height is fatness, okay? So let me put it back to four pixels and I will increase the width to, let's say 66%, watch. Boy, it go, it's so long it goes outside the clock. So you can see how great this is to make changes to it so it fits the new graphic that you add, okay? So let me show you how you can run this thing from your computer. It is so easy and so cool. So click export and click the download.zip button and that'll download it to your computer. When you expand it, it looks like this. You have a DIST, an SRC, a license, and a README. Really, all you need to pay attention to is the DIST folder, which means distribution. Double-click that, and here we have the three parts of the car. We have the index.html, right? That's the car's frame. We've got this, the script.js, that's the engine, and the styles.css, right? The look and feel. So we made all the changes to the styles and everything. So if you double click this thing and open it up, boom, there it is running on your computer, no problem. So you may get some efficiencies running it from your system versus running it from CodePen. Now, check this out. So if we go back in to the directory, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to add the 30 clocks into what's called the root which is the root of the web page. Please forgive the lack of clarity. The root is simply the folder containing all the site files and subfolders. So let's say that I'm gonna use clock face 14. So I'll just right click it and hit rename and copy the name here. Then I will open up the style.css and I have a program called brackets that allows me to make changes to the code here. And I'll scroll down to the background call right here and it's referencing imrg if i just paste in the name of the clock and save the script now whoop hit save now double click the html it will use the new clock graphic no problem so for those who have signed up to the list you're going to receive a zip file with all this code in it and all the graphics ready to be used so that you can use it directly on your computer. If you're new to OBS and you want to learn how to bring this into your live stream, it's real easy. Click the plus sign under sources, select browser, name it anything you want. I'll leave it as browser two. I will then have a choice. I will either enter the URL from the internet that has that page, or you can reference the index.html file that I unzipped on my downloads folder. I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna click local file because the HTML resides on my computer locally. I'll hit browse and uh, my explorer here defaulted to where it was expanded. So this is the contents of the zip file and there's the index file. I'll click it, I use Brave. That's why you see that lion head there. I'll hit open. I'll leave the dimensions at 800 by 600 because we can change that. So I'll hit okay. And here we are, that red square represents 800 by 600. Now, if I hit the Alt key, I can reduce that bounding box down closer to the actual clock, and now I can resize it accordingly. Easy.
If you're interested in learning about the Lewis script that does basically the same thing as this idea, click this link right here. I will see you over there. Best wishes to you. Stay strong and keep fighting. Stay strong and keep fighting. Boy.